Howdy everyone, Zakalaji back again, and in this video I'll be giving my thoughts in this Rat Clan overview. The Rat Clan are geared more towards trickery than the other clans, but can definitely do much more than just turn tricks. They, in general, require a higher level of play, such as playing cards when it isn't your turn, and keeping an eye on the whole board and the other players, but they also have a somewhat easier time getting gold over the course of the game. They typically win with either Kingslayer or Prestige victories, but also, and I have to mention this, a group of rats is called a Mischief, which definitely, definitely fits. But now let's talk about the rings of the Rat Clan. They start with the Black Opal, which is decent as far as the starter rings go. It grants you Ambush if you're chilling in a settlement and someone attacks you, and the plus one sword ha triggers if you attack someone or something that's in a settlement, so this can help with clearing banes. But I think that there's generally, overall, better rings to go around, but you could definitely go worse as far as a starter ring. The first unlocked ring for the Rat Clan is Obsidian, granting Scout on all your claim settlements and any creature that claims one from you until the end of your next turn, which is crucial. It's not their next turn, it's your next turn. So if, say you're going second and the first place person claims one of your settlements, you will only get Scout for like one little bit there until the end of your turn. Whereas if you go first and the second place person claims one of your settlements then you basically get a whole round of scout on them which can be more revealing so it's a bit inconsistent but scout is very powerful allowing you to keep an eye on the whole board and get some information about perils so obsidian is decent but like i said it can be situational third up is the ruby ring where your first rolled sword in battle explodes this is a decent default ring but sometimes you don't roll swords in battle to get its effect and the rats typically have small explode pools, so if you roll a couple of wilds before this ring, then you won't get any value whatsoever. But generally, you can get value out of this ring in 90% of your combats. And the final standard rat ring is turquoise, granting evade and plus two explode pool. I personally think this ring is overrated because the evade does not turn off while you're in the palace, so it can be nearly impossible to close out a game, no matter what type you have besides prestige, if you're going for Kingslayer, Rot, or Spirit Stone, and you do not have either a Hot Rot Rhine or a Strategist, then someone can just fight you once, you cannot hit them back, and force you out of the palace with this ring. The plus two explode pool can be okay with the rats, since like I mentioned on Ruby, they typically have smaller explode pools, but I think there's better options in the rats arsenal. With the Usurpers DLC comes Tanzanite, granting plus two gold whenever you successfully escape a peril. I think this ring is pretty good. Everyone always needs gold all the time, and you're almost certainly going to get at least some value out of this ring in a game. Might not be a whole lot, you might only successfully escape one or two perils, but that can come at crucial times when you need the extra money to equip a high dollar item or get some trickeries out of your hands. And finally, with the Rivals DLC comes Cat's Eye, granting a one gold discount on the first trickery card you play this turn. I think this is the best ring for the rats in my opinion because it most synergizes with the trickery aspect of their design. You can make very good use of this with proper turn planning because it renews the one gold discount when you draw cards at the start of your turn, but that one gold discount doesn't end until the start of your next turn, so you can do your turn normally and not play any trickery, and then when it's not your turn, say when the daytime rolls around and you get that fresh bit of gold, then you can take use of the gold discount, play a trickery card, then it's your turn again, and then you get one more gold discount and you can make use of the discount again. So this really synergizes well with a lot of the rat's abilities, it helps making play those expensive trickery cards easier, and overall you cannot go wrong with Cat's Eye. Next, we'll discuss the Heroes of the Rat Clan. First up is Mercurio, the Grinning Blade. He has a starting stat spread of 4552, and his ability is Scoundrel, stealing one gold from the owner of a settlement whenever you claim over on top of it. He's a decent character. He is pulled towards settlements by his ability, thus granting him the Trickery discount, because Trickery cards gain a one gold discount for every settlement you have once you have two or more. So. He can definitely get a lot of extra money and make use of this aspect of the Rat Clan design. I typically try to go with a ending stat spread of 6662 with Mercurio because he really doesn't need the spirit. He is a good fighter, he's bulky, he's witty, and can just roll through the whole game without delving into the spell deck too much. 
I've currently been building Mercuria with the Discipline Amulet and the Tanzanite Ring. I think these two synergize really well because even though Mercurial only has two spirit, at night he would get an additional plus three dice from the Discipline plus his natural clan affinity and then that will snowball into getting him even more gold with the Tanzanite Ring allowing him to equip those high dollar items and play the trickery cards as the Rat Clan are wont to do. Second of the Rat Clan is Zosha the Whirlwind. Even though I haven't played her since the 2.0 update, she's still a very solid character. Her starting stat spread is 5443, and while that is a little squishy with only the 4 body, the 4 wits and 3 spirit is very nice to start off with by default. And her ability is Shadow, where at night Zosha gains stealth everywhere. And it can be pretty fun to use this to get in the way of people. If they're not paying attention, you can easily trip them up. The way I've been building Zosha is with the Resist Amulet, granting plus one shields and battle and perils, helping mitigate that squishiness a little bit, and with the Black Opal Ring. So this grants stealth on settlements day and night, so at nighttime you can just move on to a settlement, and come the day you'll still be stealthed, and like I said, if your opponents aren't paying attention, they won't know where you are. Another fun thing this allows you to do it with the ranger cloak item is potentially play the majority of the game in stealth where the ranger cloak will grant you stealth when you're in force this grants you stealth on settlements and then you have the stealth at nighttime so that can be very very fun to try to pull off on somebody third rat is sargon the death teller he may look old and wrinkly but fun fact rats only live to be two to three years old so even if we multiply that by 10 due to everyone being anthropomorphized he's still only like 20 or 30 years old at max so don't let him fool you into thinking he's super wise his starting stat spread is three four five four which makes him pretty frail especially at the beginning he can be easy to beat up but his ability, Veil Gazer, is one of the best in the entire game. The top card of each deck is face up when you're drawing, and this refreshes every time you draw a card. So what this allows you to do is basically have no bad card draws. It allows you to either purposely pick out or avoid those rot cards if you want to go for that, and you can leave unoptimal cards on the top deck for the next person to draw potentially. Overall, Veil Gazer is one of the best abilities in the entire game. I've been building Sargon recently with the Obsidian Amulet. I think it's very thematically fitting on him, granting Scout even though he's blind, giving him that sight beyond sight on your settlements and then anyone who dares to claim over them. And then the Scratch Amulet helping to prop up his fight to four can help at least stay alive in the early game and then you generally want to build fight and body quests throughout the rest of the game to help shore up his main weakness there. You can go Wits and Spirit if you want to go for a more spellcaster oriented Sargon and overall you can't really go wrong building him any which way but I prefer to prop up his fight because otherwise people can pick on you quite a lot throughout the game. Finally we have Griot, the Butcher Baroness from the Rivals DLC. She is probably my favorite rat. She is the definitive trickery character because of her ability, but we'll get to that in a second. Her starting stat spread is 4453. And again, that four body can make you a little squishy in the beginning, but the five wits is very nice for keeping a full hand of cards. And her ability, Street Queen, allows Griot to have a ton of extra dice because she gets additional affinity dice at nighttime which is equal to the number of trickery cards she played during the day. And with trickery cards, they get a gold discount whenever you claim additional settlements. So you start with your clan grounds, and then when you start getting two settlements, you'll get a one gold discount, three settlements, you get two, etc. So what this allows you to do is if you can claim a lot of settlements around the map, you can basically play trickery cards for free and cycle entire hands worth of cards, thus giving you tons and tons of dice. So you can draw trickery cards at night, not play them, and then wait for the dawn, and then play all your trickery cards, and then when it's your turn again, play more trickery cards. So when night rolls around, you then have tons and tons of dice at night for both battles and perils. This ability can be very, very strong. And with that... Uh, Griot has the Soak Amulet to bump you up to 5 body, again just patching that hole making you not as squishy, and then you pretty much have to run Cat's Eye on Griot for an additional 1 gold discount 
on all on the first trickery card you play each turn. Just again synergizes extremely well with that ability and can make Riot a very very strong contender for the throne. And that is the Rat Clan. They're a tricky group who can sneak up on you with how powerful and annoying they can be. Definitely give them a shot and let me know what you think down in the comments. And like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.